Hey everyone, I just recently got the latest and greatest acquisition of a shipbuilding tool in the mail, and this is Blockbuster High Speed Block Shaper. I was kind of intrigued because a lot of the blocks that I put on boats require a little bit of filing, and uh, you know, obviously they're not supposed to be square, they're very rounded, so I personally hate hand sanding stuff, so I tried this out. So what do you get in the box? Let's take a look. -see. So, uh, like most things model shipways makes, it's very kiddish, and that there is usually a fair amount of assembly required. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this consists of. So they give you some blocks, some paddles. A jar and apparently it's saying you kind of got a before and after picture like square block and then a round block cool uh, so this is the parts list what's actually in there some assembly required as mentioned it doesn't give a real time on this uh, as far as once you get it assembled on uh, what, how long to do it. It just says, uh, kind of this, running time required to best shape your blocks will vary the material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it didn't even really give you a RPM or anything like that. Just sort of a, a swag, try it out and see how it works. Okay, so inside the box, you have like a, uh, like a laser cut sandpaper uh, this is like a standard looks like a 220 grit you've got a uh, piece cut out here that goes on the bottom piece cut here goes on the side and those pieces are for your paddles so uh, basically it looks like an old urinalysis cup but it's a plastic container you've got the laser cut pieces that are going to form Kind of the, the paddle wheel part. Top of the jar. This is going to form the collet that uh, basically creates the the paddle wheel part that assembles to the drill or rotary tool, whatever you got going on. And this is the paddles. So we're going to break those off and glue them to the aforementioned collet. And uh, let me assemble this thing, see how it works. Wow, that was quick in YouTube time. So what we've got here is I assembled it. You got yourself a really swaggy little paddle, kind of like a steam wheel. You have a jar with, you can't really see it, but basically it's sandpaper stuck inside of it. One disc on the bottom and another flat piece on the sides. I had to drill a hole in the top of which this paddle will fit down there and theoretically this will fit on top and then you take your basically spin it around and it's going to be essentially this is a rock tumbler for blocks for ships so I gotta let the glue dry and we will see where this goes thanks all right guys I finished it up uh, basically created the paddle wheel sorry there's random blocks on it the uh, so you basically glue it together now uh, somebody may have noticed that they put a screw in it um, there's nothing that holds the chuck from uh, spinning as it were so uh, uh, I tried gluing it super glue whatever unless you get some really massive adhesive like Gorilla Glue or something like that it's gonna snap out of the housing so what I did is I simply uh, drilled a hole straight through it scored this piece of uh, brass rod and then uh, I took the bra brass rod out finished up the uh, 
drilling through it and basically planted this wood screw that was able to go straight through the rod and connect into the other piece of wood. Uh, there is a little bit of play on it, but nowhere near what it was when I first started using it. Now, as you can kind of see, or barely see, I uh, started putting a bunch of stuff in there. Um, I can pull one of these things out and show you at close range. Uh, it it did a pretty reasonable job, and that may not be the. I mean, you can kind of maybe a little better. So uh, what you're seeing here, uh, they're probably not as round as maybe you would have thought they were going to be. But let me tell you, compared to how square they were, it's actually pretty good. Uh, this is a, a pretty respectable effort by uh, a very simplistic tool. So uh, basically, the, the bottom part gets crudded up pretty quick. Like, that's not just dust in there, that's, that's stuff that's been kind of smeared on. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't glue anything into this mess. I would definitely uh, just kind of set it in. Uh, if you need a new sanding pad, I would suggest that, you know, basically you take a pencil, trace around it on uh, one of those sanding sheets, cut it out with a pair of scissors, and just kind of put it right back in the bottom. The side walls don't seem to be getting crapped up hardly at all. Really, I think the side walls are just there to kind of bounce the materials off a little bit. So, uh, basically, uh, it says to uh, put all these pieces kind of on, the, on all four corners, but uh, what I've been doing is just kind of moving them to the sides a little bit so you have a a big dead space in the middle and maybe making some some space for the paddles I haven't seen it really matter so as long as you can kind of put the thing in here so you can close it and it has a little bit of free spin in there it seems to be okay obviously I cut a hole in the cover and we're gonna put that bad boy on there and this is me trying to do it one-handed I'm really not this incompetent I'm sorry so Get the cover on nice and tight, or just hand tight, and uh, basically you're gonna end up putting this into your uh, into your chuck, just like that. Okay. All right, guys, I got the chuck tightened, and I'm gonna start. I have it set for uh, a fairly low rating. You can set your if you have a power drill. I would highly recommend you set it for uh, you know maybe uh, chuck it down from drill. Uh, I've got it on drill right now, but I've got it at a higher torque. So I'm gonna... So the sound, I'm, I haven't really decided what I think the sound sounds like. It sounds to me like, uh, you know, back in the day when somebody sold you a used car and put sawdust and rocks in the transmission to keep it from clanking or to quiet it down and finally the sawdust ran out or got crushed up. It sounds a little like that. Um, obviously anybody who's ever had a rock tumbler, it sounds very similar. Uh, I'm surprised how how long the paddles last. I haven't been very gentle with this thing. I even sped up the RPM. Now, I have seen that uh, you can take as long as uh, I don't know, I, I guess for for some of these blocks, I, I left them in there for about, I don't know, a good, a good three minutes. Uh, it did shape them up pretty nice. It rounded off the edges. It didn't get them super round, but like I said, I only put them in there for three minutes. And you're not talking, it's not like a hot pocket, but it's uh, it does a reasonable job. And I, I haven't been very shy with the amount of blocks I've used in here either. So uh, right now... This, I'm doing this one-handed. I don't, you know, kind of sit here and film this with the phone. But uh, the jar is, it's got a little hump on the inside where the, the paddle's kind of formed itself over. So you don't have to spend a lot of time trying to, uh, trying to move it back and forth or, or center it. It kind of centers itself after a little while. So that's kind of interesting. 
Uh, I'm gonna stop this and uh, pull this open. So uh, I got the lid off, and uh, this is kind of what you're gonna get. There you go. All right. Again, you see the uh, kind of the detritus left at the bottom. Kind of knock that out a little bit, and uh, again. Here's uh, generally what the blocks are looking like, so not bad. I mean, it also kind of got rid of the the wood shape marks. Uh, it's hard to quantify that, but definitely uh, when these blocks are cut into squares, they have sort of a very fakey looking kind of facade, and they definitely look better. And I don't know if it's just that they, they come out a little too shiny, or, you know, there's a perception that these, you know, and you can kind of, Zoom in a little bit there. But uh anyway, I do have a couple uh do have a couple perils in there. I just wanted to see what would happen. They're not uh they don't I mean if you had really glassy looking perils, I guess you could throw it in there. These things have seemed to uh score up pretty nice. But uh anyway, so um the long and the short of this one, I guess, if you're on the fence about buying this thing, it is a time saver. I mean, you can do uh, 20 or 30 blocks at once, as opposed to taking a you know a needle file or a, a small uh, a small rasp or something and running these things over a piece of sandpaper manually, block by block, unless you just really love the therapeuticness of it. Um, I don't think, I don't know if this is. 20 something dollars worth of materials as far as this little gadget goes but uh, I definitely see maybe in the future somebody putting a, a set of plans for these things online I mean it's there's really not much to it uh, all you're paying for is the convenience of not having to gather these materials yourself and try and figure out you know the nature of it and 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 what the dimensions are and how to do it uh, really it's just a couple bucks worth of sandpaper a couple bucks worth of wood and uh you know sort of a little bit of assembly and some glue and you know, a little bit of brass stock that you know i think you could probably use an old an old drill bit if you really wanted to or a broken drill bit or just a general piece of piece of metal and uh, figure it out so again this has been the review for the model shipways blockbuster and if you look at the before and after it's uh, pretty accurate I mean, it's, it doesn't sell itself as the miracle block maker, and uh, it really isn't. So, But it will improve the blocks you put on your ship model in a very short amount of time. So, you know, I don't have a rating system. I guess I'd give it, uh, you know, two dead eyes up or something. I don't know, something nautical. So anyway, that's all there is to it, and thanks for watching.